You want to sit down? We don't have to. Oh, there we go. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with the special guest. <laughs> this is Evangeline. This is T1 Stoneforge Mystic. This is my baby playing with one of her dolls. You want to say hi to everyone? Say hi there. Or just look at them. Just look at them. Alright. So before I get to the Q&A, something really quickly that I want to show you. Ready? Let's do this. Alouette, gentil alouette. Alouette, je te plumerai. Alouette, gentil alouette. Alouette, je te plumerai. Je te plumerai le dos. Je te plumerai le dos. Et le bec. Et le bec. Et le tête. Et le tête. Alouette. Alouette. Ah 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 ah. Alouette, j'en dis alouette. Alouette, je te plumerai. Alouette, j'en dis alouette. Alouette, je te plumerai. Alright. Tickle time. Now she's waving. <laughs> now she's not there. You want to come back here? Come back here. Get back in the screen. There you are. There you are. All right, so quick questions from all of you. Uh, as of when I'm recording this, I have a bunch. I'm not going to go through and count them all. Here we go. So just rattling them off. Start off with the one that wasn't uh, posted on YouTube but was given to me on Facebook because you couldn't get to YouTube. Uh, it's from James Walker, who's done a few videos with me, but he's done Yu-Gi-Oh! videos on the channel, so the question was, if money were no object, what Yu-Gi-Oh! deck would you run? And right now, in the meta as it currently stands, and don't switch off that screen, <laughs> I would have to say PK Fire is probably, first of all, it's like the coolest named deck in Yu-Gi-Oh!, right? PK Fire. If you haven't played much Smash Bros., or haven't played any of the Mother series games, uh, Mother, you know, Ness and Lucas, that sort of thing. PK Fire. Come on. It's a combination, for those that don't know, of two archetypes. It's Phantom Knights, hence the PK, and Burning Abyss, hence the fire. And they weren't hit terribly hard in the last banning. They're still really good. Uh, you can still play them at a top tier level. They're not like Monarchs got hit super hard. Cosmos got sort of terraformed. You can still play them, but they're kind of different. Uh, yeah, you can still play PK Fire, and if money were no object, I would want to play that deck. It's a really skill intensive. It has a lot of good matchups, and I just I like it. It's actually a lot more consistent, I find, uh, than well, I don't know how widely spread this opinion is, but I think it's a fairly consistent deck for the format as it currently stands. And next, now a number of you asked uh, multiple questions, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer all of them, though, because there aren't that many, but here we go. From etnex4tw, I feel like that, that should be a word, like if the 4 is an A, oh, whatever, forget it. Do you prefer, or so, you prefer silly questions? Yes, I do, actually. Is this your real voice? Okay, um, it seriously sounds like you're reading a horror story to someone in half of your videos. So actually, I do some dramatic readings of horror stories, actually, H.P. Lovecraft being my favorite author. So that was actually a pretty good, if you didn't already know that, good guess, good on you. Uh, no, this isn't quite my normal voice. What I'm doing right now isn't quite my normal voice. It's a little bit deeper, a little fuller. What you hear during my gameplay videos is my normal voice. Uh, but when I'm, and actually this is pretty close to my normal voice, but when I'm excited, when I'm anxious, whatever the case may be, um, I sound a little too southern, I guess, too twangy, for those that know what that means, for my taste. And so I actually just prefer to do something like this, uh, to sort of mask that a little bit. It, it's going to come through to some extent, but just not too much is my preference. Now, my re this is my real voice. When I'm trying to do my actual real voice, like, this is what I'm doing now, and this is my real voice. So there's not too much of a difference. Um, but, oh, and when I do customer service for my job, it is... Let's see. Thank you for calling GE. My name is Jay. How can I help you today? 
uh, actually messed it up a little bit, but you get the idea. The script wasn't right, but the, the voice was. There's a number of reasons for that. But that's, that's my voice. I, uh, and I used to be a voice actor, and I do silly voices, but these are, that, those are some within the range of real voices that I can do. Okay, speaking of multiple questions though, Neoghoul Cyber Dragon, shout out to you, but what, three questions now? <laughs> Alright, why do you love Infect? It's the deck that I got started with, and Glucinor Elf just seems to fit my personality and my playstyle. Uh, which, depending on how you look at that, either makes me a terrible person, or means that I'm committing war crimes <laughs> during games of Magic. No, no, we're good. Uh, I just, I like the mechanic. I don't think it's broken, but I, it is the kind of mechanic that you can't ignore when building your deck. You have to have early interaction, or you will lose. Well, okay, early interaction or an extremely fast combo, or you will lose. And a lot of people don't like that, because it kills them more quickly than they can set up their game plan with. Uh, people that want to spend a lot of turns dirtling to get some awesome board lock or combo or just a swarm on the field and in fact says no you have to respect that I can kill you on turn two or three. A lot of decks don't like that uh, but they're not broken because they're so easy to interact with. Uh, you know, Lightning Bolt is the most commonly played card in modern for instance and then there's Path to Exile near it and then there's Dismember and so on and so forth. Uh, so next question from the same on a scale of 1 to 10, rate your Jigglypuff in Melee. <sighs> if 10 is Hungrybox, is Juan Cena, you know, and a 1 is just, you know, worse than Evangeline, hey. like, doesn't know how to... Hey, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Good timing, though. Just, you don't know how to play the game? Maybe a 4. I don't, I don't know exactly where that scale is, but, you know, I can consistently wave dash, I can do some rest out of shields, I have some rest setups, but I'm still rusty enough, I don't get to practice against real people enough to get the fighting game fundamentals down like I would like. Uh, and so, and our, our meta here is such that even though I've come in first at two locals, that's not saying much. Um, Grand Finals at the second to last l locals that we've had here had a Roy in it. It was Marth Roy. I was the Marth. Uh, so if that tells you a little bit about our meta. Uh, not necessarily a bad Roy, but a Roy. And, and not like Pyro or Sethlon, I just a Roy. Um, and then let next, if you had to go against my recently completed s Green Black, oh okay, Clues standard deck, what deck would you choose to counter it? That's a good question. Um, of the decks that I have, it would have to be the land destruction. Uh, in general, I don't think that playing a control deck works well against clue artifact or archetypes because clues give them that sort of inevitability. We'll both be drawing a lot of cards, yours potentially lets you draw a lot more and give you mana sinks for the turns where you can't do anything otherwise. So, it's very tempting for me to say uh, land destruction is where I would want to be. Certainly of the decks that I have, not of, not Esper Awaken. Uh, I don't actually think I would want to play my 8-rack deck, standard discard against you. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with land destruction. Although if I could pick any deck, like top tier decks... Um, you can you can lay your head on me. Get that big smile on. Get that big old smile. He is so cute. Um, let's see, if I could pick just any deck. Honestly, I think I might just try to outrace you with one of the modern, or not modern, one of the newer burn decks. Uh, so that might be where I'd go. Take care of like your tireless trackers, low to the ground creatures, with fiery impulse, galvanic bombardment, and just slowly eat away. Bedlam Reveler, I think, is a super strong card in the format right now. Uh, next, Tree asked the question, what is your favorite moment in magic history? Well, uh, I can't just tell you, I have to show you. It's this.
Cruel Ultimatum is the card he's hoping to top deck. And... Oh! Oh! Ultimatum! Off the top! Wow! He arranged the mana in the shape of the one spell that he had to draw. Form of... Oh my goodness! Oh, and, uh, that edit was my own. Yeah. So, next, Renee Bow asks, Why no... <laughs> Why not four Stormcrows in modern Polymorph? So for those that don't know what this is, Polymorph is a card that lets you destroy a creature on the field, and then you reveal cards from that uh, the owner's library, or the, yeah, the controller's library, until you hit a creature and you put it into play. Well, what I've been doing is playing Imrakul and just annihilating six 15-15 flyer, but, but of course... Why do that when you can play the almighty Stormcrow? Now, I hadn't thought of this before, but you can pitch Stormcrow to Disrupting Shoal. <laughs> and that will counter, for free, in modern, that'll counter Tarmogoy, that'll counter, uh, Reman, that'll counter Mana Lake, that'll counter Grim Flayers, now that you, yeah, Kappa. Kappa, 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 Kappa. <laughs> um, I would... If I were being silly, yes, I would put Stormcrow in the deck. It, I, I actually could try to do that, not because it's real, but because my Polymorph build happens to win with the combo. It doesn't need the combo. It wins through a control game a lot of the time, beating with Ink Moth Nexus, Rune Chanter's Pike, or taking their creatures with Vidalkin Shackles, for instance, are two of my favorite plays. There's a Batter Skull, there's Corrupted Conscience in the sideboard, uh, there's cloud form for again rune chanters pike beats and so what I could do with Stormcrow is I could basically just make a statement I could say look. I don't need polymorph to beat you <laughs> But no, I not seriously, of course All right, so Uwe Schmidt You're German, right? I, I have no idea. I, I'm sure I slaughtered that. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I'm sure I just was terrible at that pronunciation. Uh, what is your favorite vid from your videos and on MTG coverage? Okay, so two separate ones then, right? So my favorite of my videos <laughs> is probably one where, uh, oh man, just off the top of my head, I'll, I'll say my temptation is to say that it is either a game of uh, French Commander, French EDH, that I was playing with someone. I'm Animar, and she was Nylia, God of the Hunt. And I started going off, but she had an enchantment that made it where every time I played a card, reveal the top card if it's a creature she puts it in play, otherwise I think it goes to the bottom of the deck. Uh, and so, as I'm playing all these spells and just going off on my turn, she ends up getting something like 30 creatures on the board. We each have so many creatures, but she actually gets out of it with two that she happened to have. One that prevented her creature from being blocked, and I think a ton of commander damage was coming in, and oh, it's just, oh, I got wrecked. I got wrecked. It was fun. Uh, so it's either that, or... Uh, I had a really skill-intensive match once with a uh, a birthing pod deck back when that was around, and it was he dropped a Malira in game two, and I still won through it. I've only won through Malira, I think twice, only two times that I can remember uh, playing Infect, and this was one of them, and it was on camera. This was the one that was on camera, the only one I remember it being anyway. Now, as for MTG coverage in general. John Finkel versus Bob Marr, I want to say it was Worlds, it was some insane, uh, the, the artifact that lets you pay any amount of life and you can put out, uh, tokens with, that are power toughness equal to the amount of life you paid, so they're both at one <laughs> from this, and this, they both have it. They're both able to make these tokens, and it just goes back and forth with these powerhouses. Not just on the board, but powerhouses of the game at each other. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the ending. You should actually watch it. Hopefully I remember to put that in the description below. 
So check that out. Great game. It was on what? ESPN, I think? It was... Okay. Not that I watched it live, but it was cool nonetheless. What do you think the best combo deck in Modern is? I actually think it's Pyromancer Storm right now. If we want to count Infect as a combo deck, and it can be an aggro deck, however you want to classify it, uh, Infect, I think, is seeing a lot more hate, partially because of the prevalence of Jund and Obzon, or Junk, in the format right now, bringing low-to-the-ground removal, and that is not good for Infect. Uh, Tron is not seeing as much play, but that may be on the rise. It, on the one hand, it saw less play because Ayavugan was banned. On the other hand, because Tron lost Ayavugan, it allowed more room for Junks to, and uh, Junk to come in, which are decks that Tron preys upon, which then makes Tron more likely to be played, even though they're not as good. So there's a little bit of a metagame there. In fact, also won a GP uh, not too long ago, and so people know to pack their uh, their Maliras, their spell guides. I went to a Modern IQ uh, this past week, I think. And every match that I lost saw either Spellskite or Malira, or in one case, both hitting the field against me. That was... that was not fun, was it, honey? That was not fun at all. People know to pack hate for it. Pyromancer Storm is kind of going under the radar. It's still a turn three deck. People have to respect it. If you're not going to play early interaction against a deck like Infect, you better go off quickly and they can outrace. Plus, they have great sideboard answers. They put Lightning Bolt in the sideboard, a lot of the time anyway. They have Blood Moon, they have Anger of the Gods or Pyroclasm. They have stuff that really works in the meta right now. Uh, especially Blood Moon, I think is super hot. Uh, it just doesn't work against Affinity, which is a deck they can outrace. So I don't think they're too... and plus they can just get into Shatterstorm or Shattering Spree or Vandal Blast or... <laughs> good grief. Ooh. So Pyromancer Ascension, I think, is the deck right now, the best combo deck in the format. Where do you work during the day? Well, this is it. This is where I work. All right, really, the only things that you see here that I need are the phone, of course, because I'm remote customer service, the computer on which I work, and the headset that accompanies the phone, but that's hidden because I don't want Evangeline to stretch or break it. And that's really it. In between calls, I can sort magic cards and build decks. I can browse the World Wide Web. I can also just practice Super Smash Bros. Melee or Project M. Shoutouts to Jigglypuff for what must be the biggest 420 Blazit in history. I mean, look at that. She's high as fuck. Also, shoutouts to Glitch Souls for whatever's going on in this art. So, I actually have a pretty good job, I think. Super good, super hot, top tier now. It's fine. Um, I like it. Do you play EDH? If so, who's your favorite commander? Yes, and I am that guy. I have more than one commander, but my favorite is Animar because I am a terrible person. No. <laughs> it's actually because I find playing Animar to be really skill intensive. At least the way that I run it. It's one of those, to try to combo off as soon as possible, you have to make super optimal plays, you have to anticipate what, you have to know your deck really well because of all the tutors and all the draw power probabilities for what you eat. Watch one of my videos where I play Animar and I try to go off, and in one game, for instance, it's basically Arch Enemy. It's Four-player battle royale, but it's it's arch enemy because I'm playing Animar. Uh, I kill one person with Graham's number damage. I guess you can't name infinite, but an arbitrarily high number. And then the other two, I mill out infinitely with Oblivion Sower. Yeah, and I think I've actually killed definitely on turn four. I may have done turn three before on the channel. Don't quote me on that. That may not be right. Definitely turn four though. In Commander. In Commander. In Commander. Cloudstone Curio is usually how you make that work, but there are a lot of ways to get it done. And a lot of Eldrazi. Eldrazi have been good to Animar. I like casting Kozilek for free, and Ulamog, and the other Ulamog. Oh yeah, it's hot. Now, 
Oh, by the way, that was from Nickville, and the question before was from Magic Miles, and before that, Daniel Martin. Well, they're on the screen, you see. But the next question is from X Zunes. Zunes, okay. What do you know about Finland? I'm a Finn, by the way. Okay, we'll do that question first. Off the top of my head, what do I know about Finland? Okay. Well, I'm an American, so forgive me if I'm a little ignorant about the rest of the world. Uh, first of all, I know your education is top tier. You're like consistently number one, or like right around number one in education rankings around the world from year to year. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, for those, you, you have, I have no earthly idea how to pronounce or even spell the word, um, what's it called? The, the, the box. It's a maternity package or parental pack. It's the thing, for those that aren't from Finland or don't know what this is, when you are expecting a kid, we could have had this for you, uh, in Finland, you get a box. <laughs> you get a box, uh, and it comes to you with, uh, everything. It, it's a starter kit for having a baby. It comes with diapers or nappies, I guess they say, I learned recently. In the rest of the world, they say nappies. It comes with, uh, I think diaper wipes, baby books. It comes with, of course, clothes. Um, I think it comes with, like, lotion or diaper rash cream or something like that. Condoms, interestingly enough, <laughs> in those. Which makes sense, but still, yeah, okay. Uh, so that would be kind of cool. And you don't have to take that. You, you can take a certain amount of money instead, but the box is usually worth more. Speaking of which, the box is a crib. Like, the actual box itself is a crib. That is cool. So that's a cool little thing about Finland. Uh, I really like the amount of family leave that you guys have, enough that uh, one of the places, like, it, it all depended on school, where I got into graduate school, but uh, my ex and I were considering moving to another country, and Finland was on the list of potential countries to which we could move. We could stay here, we could go over somewhere else, and that was one of the reasons why. We were planning on having a kid, and wanted to have a kid in a place where, you know, they really care about kids. <laughs> and where we wouldn't have to go straight back. Yeah, for those that don't know, in America, you don't get any paid family leave. It's not... You may, like, if you work at a certain business, but it's not mandated by the government. Like, zero weeks. E. Um. Oh, other things. Um, I'm sure I know more. The most ob what should be the most obvious one to me, you have like the best metal bands a outside of the United States. Probably the country that has the most bands that I like come from Finland, or at least the most bands that I know where they're from. There's um, there's Nightwish. There's sorry if I mess these pronunciations up. There's Turisas. There's Korpiklani. Uh, there's I used to be a big fan of him, not so much nowadays. Uh, and there may be more, but I don't know if they're from Finland, if there are more. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fan of metal. I guess Korpiklani's more like folk metal rather than heavy metal, but metal nonetheless. I'll take it. That's, that's, where, I, that's where I like to be. Uh, other things about Finland. Um, you had... I think you still do have, I, I may be wrong about this, the sniper with the most confirmed kills in the world. Um, I don't remember his name. Uh, I remember he was really good, fought the Russians. I think this was World War II. I think. I may be wrong. But, yeah, that's a thing. And then, of course, as soon as this is done, I'm going to remember his name and remember having, like, seen him on History International or something. Mm-hmm. I got your belly. Other things about Finland. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. Um, I feel like there is something else I know, but I just can't think of it. Alright. Uh, next question you asked, which five MTG cards has your favorite art? Man, you are asking the toughest questions. <laughs> okay, off the top of my head. Not necessarily, yeah, probably in this order. Uh, Gaia's Blessing. Path to Exile Judge Promo. Are you getting sleepy? You can sleep on me if you need. Um, Haru Ona. You see a theme here, there's a reason for that. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm 
thinking. Kaysa, K-A-Y-S-A. You want to get in bed? Okay, I'll let you in bed. And probably, I know this is going to sound kind of cliche, Jace the Mind Sculptor, the eyes are really what do it for me. Looking, you can, I never noticed the eyes until you like look really close and you can still see the pupil and everything. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, we'll, we'll wrap this up really quickly then, as best I can. And uh, any other games besides Magic you enjoy? I play Super Smash Brothers Melee competitively. I'm trying to get into it with what time I, I can invest in it. And I also have some Yu-Gi-Oh! games on the channel. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't a game I get to play as much, but it's definitely a game I like to play. Alright. Let's see. Will you ever do uh, giveaways? If I get the ability to, the I shouldn't. it shouldn't be too long before I can, the financial means or whatnot. Uh, but the Patreon doesn't have a lot of people on it, and uh, I... If I ever get to the point where I'm making enough money to really be giving away money, then absolutely. Also, I ended up selling a lot of my collection, so I don't have those cards to serve as giveaways. Uh, although, at some point, I could, like, give out signed Glistener Elves. That wouldn't barely be too expensive. I think I might do that for uh, something later on. Uh, hey man, I really like your videos. Congrats. Polymorphous1, da-da-da. Uh, sorry, I'm just really quickly trying to hurry through for obvious reasons. Uh, but I don't own one because I'm not sure in what color I should play it. Do you think Azoria Stopter Sword Polymorph is viable? A future deck tech, maybe? Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, from Quebec. Excellent. Uh, shoutouts to you from being in Quebec. Uh, I wanted to go to McGill. I wanted to go to school in Montreal. Uh, life got in the way a little bit. And I'll get to that soon enough, I hope, but uh, top tier place to be in the world. Uh, yes, I absolutely think so. I'm a fan of using the card Polymorph not as the main win condition in the deck, but as an alternate win condition, which is to say you win off of something else, like a control plan or a token plan, or something like that, and you use Polymorph as an oops, I win button, which is sort of similar to how a lot of Splinter Twin decks operated. They could beat you with just the tempo plan off Deceiver Exarch, Pester Might. Um, they could do it with Snapcaster Mage and just an insane amount of value. Uh, sometimes they'd splash another color, say black for Tassigur, green for Tarmogoyf, etc. Uh, but I think that you could absolutely do a token polymorph or a uh, Sword of the Meek, Thopter Foundry uh, c combo and then just happen to win with polymorph as well. Absolutely top tier. Well, I say top tier. Seems like it could be like tier two at least to do something like that. And then you can even transform if you need to into say a gifts package when they uh, if they don't bring in graveyard hate or something like that. I don't know. Uh, there's a number of ways you could potentially take that. Gifts ungiven is is good though. Uh, you can tell it's getting to my voice. It's been a long day. Uh, let's see. Did you play Skyrim? I have not had the chance to play Skyrim yet. Uh, I just, I haven't actually gotten the chance to play any Elder Scro Scrolls games. I've seen them played quite a bit, uh, including uh, GDQ speedruns, but I have not actually had the chance to play them myself. Uh, hopefully I'll get to it at some point. My Elder Scrolls series is Dark Souls. <laughs> some people's Dark Souls is the Elder Scrolls series. I know, apples and oranges, but I very much am a fan of Dark Souls. How did I start playing MTG? There's actually a video I made on that, just to save time. I'll uh, put that in the description. And there you go, that's the... I actually just recently made it, too. Let's see. Next... Oh, that's it? Actually, that's it. The next one is uh, One Not Found saying, Congrats. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right. And if you have any other questions for me that you, uh, or if you came a little too late for this video, when I hit 4,000 subs, we'll have another Q&A, and you can get your questions in then. Absolutely. So our special guest is really making the video right now. There's all this, you don't really want to look at this. Aww. All right. We're gonna get you in, we're gonna get you all tucked in. All right. 
We'll see you later, YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye.